What is up, guys? I got two split systems here. I just got done with the other building. I got some video on the diagnosis part. Um, I didn't do anything on the repairs, but we replaced a bunch of motors and charged a couple things up. And leak searched and contactors and all kinds of good stuff. So I got a split system over here uh, that I just looked at. You got two thermostats right there. Two furnaces here. Um, I have not kicked the AC on yet. The only first thing I did was kick the blowers on, make sure my blowers ran, and the blowers did run. I got dirty filters. I've only got one to replace right now just because I found that over at the other building. Uh, so I'm going to change the filters and we'll kick the ACs on here shortly. Go out and see. They said it wasn't keeping up, so I'm not sure. Or actually, they said it was acting weird, so they turned it off. So we're going to kick them on, check them out, see what the hell's going on here. So this one actually wasn't running. And that door switch isn't made. So that could have been an issue if we're not making that door switch. We need this bottom panel needs to go on first. And then we'll throw a filter in there. Maybe. Well, I'm gonna get the bottom panel on. Let's make sure this uh I know it runs, it ran for me earlier. I wonder if this switch wasn't intermittently opening because that blower runs all right let's get the filter changed and make sure our switch is closed make sure we prop that door so it don't get locked out There's my ac's right here nothing special no safeties just build a grade Build a grade everything. Um, I just did a bunch of maintenance at the other building because everything was dirty. These are just single coils. They don't look awful, but we could probably use a cleaning. I can see some light through. So let's get our panels off, check to see, make sure we got voltage. We'll kick them on one at a time and see what they feel like and kind of go from there. So I'd like to know what Talk to the person who actually saw what they were doing. They said they were acting weird, but I mean, I don't see anything out of the ordinary. The compressor didn't start there. Let's see about this one. That one. This motor's dying. I can hear it. Um, let's give them a call. I may not have hit that one good bring a meter let's just check our capacitors and verify our voltage then we'll clean them up and get amp draws because i think that motor's dying let's verify our voltage 212 i got a loose connection there oh yeah i can see i saw the wire burnt but that thing's not even on there we need to get to that I got the same thing over here. Burnt up red wire. 212. So we may not have been starting. We got to it before it got too damn bad. Verify that I'm dead. That one's moving around. It's halfway tight. This thing right here is just pulling right off. Not even trying. So let's get new connectors. Go ahead and check our caps too. Forty-five. It's 
what it is. 45.5. They look all right. I don't know how old these units are in five. God bless. Do the same thing here. Common and Herm. At 44. And five. So capacitors are good. Let's get good tight connections on my incoming power. The capacitor wires were pretty tight and everything else check everything but I mean everything else seems tight those are the connections that oh, the only connections that wouldn't have come from the factory are those there somebody put in so probably get a different kind of uh, spade and probably put it up here on the actual terminal and not use these slip-ons these don't always make good contact so Go get that done and then we'll kick them on and see what they look like. I don't know if I have water, so I don't know that I'm going to be able to clean these condensers. We could blow them out, but they're not awful. I can see light through them. I'm probably going to talk to the maintenance guy out here and see if they don't have water, what they want to do, if they want to get water over here and do it themselves or what. But it doesn't look like it's going to affect us too much as far as operation goes at this point. So this one wasn't a terrible connection. You can see I saw the overheating right there on that side it was just the connector itself was loose and i don't know how well y'all can see but that kind of purplish sheen that's the wire overheating and you can tell when you strip these things if it doesn't want to strip even though you're through the insulation so we're going to go ahead and cut back a little further and just make sure we got good wire um, the other one doesn't look too bad we're going to do the same thing over here i mean this one's almost gone but uh, that's an indication of overheating there. This one just didn't get quite as bad. And I'm just using these four connectors here. That, on the actual terminals, there's a block back there and we're behind it. That's a much better connection than a, any spade terminal. Everything else is okay. I'm not gonna do anything else with it. Get the other one and then uh, flip them on and see what happens. Where's that one? I don't know how much you guys can see. I'm in the sun and I'm at an awkward position because I'm not sitting where I would normally sit right in the corner on these things. But yeah, that that was worse than anything. Yeah, it's a problem. Luckily we got to it for too much is wrong. So we're gonna get two more connectors on there. Get everything tight. We'll get at least a temp drop on this guy. So let's get us a temp drop. And yes, I noticed the filter doesn't go in there. That's the least of my worries at this point. I turn them on one at a time and see. The panel's not even in there all the way. See which one comes on so we can mark them on what AC's what. They both go into the same supply duct, so. Cool. Hoping that would be my left. So that's cool on. Get compressors running. Nope. That's that's the compressor that didn't want to start when I pushed it in either. I mean, we can put a hard start on it, get it started. Maybe it's just a. Uh, it was just tight. Oh, 
I tried that time. I heard it. All right. So that was actually, they're labeled CU1 and 2. I don't know if there's a label on the inside. So we'll have to try to get a hard start on that guy. See if we can't get the other one running. think that other guy started either. I heard the one compressor start when I pushed the contactor in. Now we haven't tried to come on yet. Make sure I didn't pull anything off. It must be on a time delay? What the hell? came on immediately. Why didn't this one? Cool on, cool's not on. Are they breaking just the Y call maybe? That didn't seem like it was, there's no water in there. There's no water in there. All right, so I'm not getting a signal outside. I need to, I guess, start here, make sure I'm getting a signal from the thermostat. And then we can work our way outside and see. So there is a common connected. Hmm. All right, let's check for a call here. So it is killing just, this is my condenser wire here, so I can see I'm tied to yellow, with yellow from the thermostat, and then this is breaking the common, going to the condenser. So my safety is breaking the condenser wire. I'm gonna have to try to find a way to do this one-handed. Needs two hands. Shit. Not showing a call. I'm gonna have to wait for the time delay because I killed power to it probably. We should hear the blower ramp up when my call comes. There's 26 volts on my floor. That's my common. So I had 26 volts on this side of my switch and that side of my switch, so my switch is closed. As soon as I get a call, it should be sending the signal outside if I'm getting the call.
feel like I should have timed out by now. Yeah, my cooling's on. Or supposed to be on. But I'm not getting the signal. Here. Nothing. Common and yellow. Alright. Solve that real quick. That's my one that's not running. It's got to time out again, but I know that thermostat works. Let's see if it comes on now. Showing the cooling on again. And I got nothing on common and yellow. So I'm losing my call. In the wire somewhere, I guess. It's not ever getting to the condenser. I could check all my connections on behind the stat and see. I got more wires if I need another one, but uh, for some reason, man, all the connections are tight in here. All right. So let's check my connections on the stack. They all look good, but maybe there's something behind there. I don't know what the hell would have happened to the wire. But they just randomly, I don't know how old these things are either. But. I mean, everything looks normal. I can't pull the wire out of there. They cut all the rest of the wire short. I mean, it just goes through fucking plywood. That's kind of weird. waiting on the delay again weird thing is um, this was flashing battery I messed with my common and my red in there just to make sure I had power so I am getting power but it's not flashing battery anymore so I wonder if one of those connections was loose one of the connections was loose and now it says cool on, the fan went off. Oh, you know what? Son of a bitch, I lost my, lost my door switch. Uh, let's give it a shot again. I'm wondering if it didn't, if I didn't have power because my batteries were showing flashing low. So if I didn't have power, that would have been doing that because this one was not flashing low batteries. And if I didn't have power there, I wasn't going to get it down to my... I guess that doesn't really make sense because I had, I mean, the blower ran. Hmm. So I think I got confused. I swapped my thermostats at one point and then got to doing things. I swapped them back to see if this condenser won't come on. Um, this is the thermostat that was here. And with the cooling call, I'm not closing my pins back here from R to yellow. So this stat is bad, and I don't think I have one on my truck. Um, we're gonna make sure that condenser comes on, and then we will have to get a thermostat. So I, I swapped them back. This guy actually plugged back on since I was out here. I still got no call over here. I gotta figure that out. 
I'm getting confused. I'm doing too many things at once. But this guy actually kicked in. The compressor started running. So I'm going to leave this one run. It all feels okay. We'll get a temp drop. And then I'll try to cycle it. If it'll cycle without putting a hard start on it, I'm going to leave it as is. Um, probably needs a hard start. But if it'll cycle one more time without humming or doing anything weird, I may leave it for now at least. Because I don't know why it wasn't starting before. That capacitor is good. So now let's figure out our other issue. So I had 80 on my return. And I don't know if y'all can see it. But we got about 60 coming out. So I got a 20 degree drop on this guy. I don't see any reason to put gauges on it. As long as it stays at 20 and doesn't drop anywhere crazy, we'll leave that one alone and we've got to figure this guy out. We will get an amp draw on that compressor before we leave it too. So I do truly have a bad thermostat. I'm on continuity. That's red. I can see yellow's the third terminal down. So one, two, three. And I'm not getting nothing. And I got a cool on. So I'm gonna find a thermostat. And just to verify there's nothing in between here and there. That was awful sparky. I bet I blew that fuse. I bet that's what killed my thermostat. There's a short in the wire. I shouldn't, you shouldn't see a spark like that. I don't know if I caught that or you all saw that. But I shouldn't have. There's a short in that damn wire. Now, thermostat wouldn't call, so that wouldn't have, short wouldn't have showed up, but that would have had to have, at some point before the thermostat, I guess maybe it killed the thermostat before it blew the fuse, it doesn't really make sense. Let's get a little popper in here and see if we can't, uh, so I was just jumping red and yellow. So it's gotta be something in my yellow wire, I guess. And I guess it could be what had power, so it shouldn't be in the red wire. It's gotta be in my yellow wire. I guess it could be going to the outdoor unit too. So we're gonna have to isolate and figure that out. Like I said, I got more wire if I need it. So let's find out where we're shorted. I didn't see anything noticeable. I didn't see anything noticeable outside, but it runs all the way up with the line sets. And it's all above a ceiling in an attic. I ain't going in the attic, I tell you that. I got enough wires to play with, we'll figure it out. These are some nice synthetic ball fields too. Look at this guy. What you doing there, man? What's up, buddy? Yeah, now that trash can, you looking for peanuts. <laughs> so, got a little popper. All right, now I got power back. I'm leaving everything connected. I'm gonna start working my, way. I'm gonna start the furthest and work my way back. Um, got the so I'll have my complete thermostat wire going over to the condenser because I pulled my condenser wires. And we'll go ahead, no spark this time. Jump red and yellow. There goes that, so I should have 24 volts outside right now. I'm doing about 58 degrees. I'm sure it's dropped a couple degrees, so that one I'm happy with. We'll go ahead if we can get this one running and get a supply temp on it before I put a fuse back in. I 
I looked at these damn contactors too. This is something in the wire I didn't see. And these contactors almost look perfect. These units don't look that old. But you see I got my thermostat wire disconnected. And I'm checking the stupid. I'm checking the wrong wires. It's been a long day already. There's my 26 volts. And these wires, there ain't nothing wrong with those wires. So it's gonna be that contactor. Let's pull it and ohm it and then we can reconnect. And should have AC. Let's see if I can get on the coil. Yep, 0.7 ohms, that's awful low. That's what's killed my thermostat. I just can't explain why it didn't kill my dam. I think it would have blown the fuse first, but I guess it is what it is. Let's get a new thermostat on there and uh, get this thing running. A new contactor too, obviously. Let's go ahead and get an amp draw before I leave. This one's been running for a while. So 10 amps on my compressor. It's rated 13 amps. I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. What I'll do is while I run to get the contactor for this one, it ran for a good while. So we'll go ahead and pull it, let it sit for a few minutes, and then cycle it again. The only thing I thought is the way it's wired, they're breaking common out here. There's no time delay on this. So if that uh, if that safety wet switch were to chatter, not that it would, it wouldn't be good for these things. So probably need to wire, uh, kill the power to the thermostat one way or another, um, whether red or whatever. That way you can't chatter these things because these single phase units don't like to, uh, cut off and right back on with those scroll compressors. They don't like that. So... Let's go get a contact. Now I'm gonna have to run and get a thermostat for the one that's failed, but I was just looking at the inspection date and it was inspected because I was trying to figure out what age they were. These were put in in 2019, apparently. So we're gonna go ahead and swap both um, contactors. So, I mean, we're looking at, they're only like four years old. So I'm not gonna, I'm not just gonna change one contactor. I don't know what happened to that contactor, but everything seems to be working now. Jumped out from here. So we're gonna <clears throat> do that and then check temp drop on this other one. I don't expect to have too many more problems. These things aren't that damn old. I don't know why we lost the contactor all of a sudden. It was built in 1990. It, wouldn't have failed already it would have lasted another 20 years so we killed power there got two single pole thermostat or thermostats i can't even talk anymore got a thermostat inside got two single pole contactors both these contactors look great and i'll ohm this one out but i'm not it's not worth me making another trip for another contactor failing Let's see if this starts up again And that compressor started up again. I don't know why it was struggling. I actually pulled the covers off and looked at the contacts. And the contacts are perfect. I mean, they looked like they were, I mean, hell, what, four years old? Whatever, whatever they are. So, for SMG, we'll ohm it out. I'm gonna replace it anyways. Because again, it's not worth my time. Yeah, see, that one's okay. And I really don't need to replace both of them because I'm happy with that reason. But these were installed at the same time. I don't know if it was 
I mean, what happened to the coil on this one, I don't know. I can't see the coils. They got them enclosed, so I can't see anything in there. But it is what it is for a $20 contactor. It's not worth another trip for me, so I might as well change it while I'm here. Capacitors were good. We're going to talk to the maintenance guy about cleaning these coils, but they're going to be all right for now. Fuse back in. Now all I need to do is leave the sub base. There ain't nothing wrong with the sub base. And I'll have to program it. I guess I can put batteries in it, but I'll pop it on the wall right there. We should get a screen and I'm about to go through and set it up. So we got two condensers running now. Mm, 11 amps there, 10 amps. This one just started up. So, well, it'll be good to go. Um, let's come out and clean that crap up. I gotta get in here. Tidy up my crap inside. But the only other thing I noticed was there's a returner up there that we need to get boxes off of. I don't know how badly it's blocked because I can see the top of it, but that needs to be kept clear. We're gonna temp drop. Showing the same temperature there. 60 degrees. Like I said, it just started up, but that's, you know, we're running 78 in, so I would expect about 58 out of 20 degrees. So I'm gonna call this one good. Um, leave a trade burn you found it. See y'all next time.